Well, what's up, City fam? Thank you so much for joining us for week three of this series we've been in called Your Biggest Fan. In this series, we've been highlighting the stories of four incredible women in our church that have done amazing things for the kingdom of God, have given themselves to his ministry and our church, and we were telling their story. We're using this series to highlight you because you are the, the real heroes. Us as pastors, teachers, we're here to equip you to do the work of the ministry. And that's where we're gonna start today. In Ephesians 4.12, their responsibility, our responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. We are here for you. You're the real heroes. You're the boots on the ground. You're on the front lines and God wants to use you. We hope we can use this series as an encouragement to all of us to know that no matter where we're from, what we've been about, how much we know about scripture, how long we've been a Christian, God can use us and he wants to use us. In week one, we talked about Ruth and how uh, Ruth was used by God and her entire family tree was altered. She ends up being in the bloodline of King David and Jesus. And we met Kayla, who's been through a lot of difficult things. Uh, she's a member of our church. She's a single mom of two incredible kids. And we heard her story about God's faithfulness and how he used her through difficult circumstances in her life. Then week two, we talked about Esther and how God used her past to basically save the people, save the Jewish people through her story. We uh, met April from our church who has been through so much, but God is using her history, her pain, her story to reach people that have been through similar things and to, to bring women in her life closer to healing, closer to a relationship with Jesus. And today we're gonna do more of the same. We're gonna look at a couple of different women in the New Testament church, Lydia and Priscilla. Just very briefly tell their story. Lydia shows up in Acts chapter 16. She's the very first believer in Philippi. You know the book Philippians. That's Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. Paul was on his second missionary journey when he had a vision of a man who pleaded with him, come to Macedonia. So Paul listens to that vision. He, he loads up his crew and they head to Macedonia to Philippi. And Luke, the author of Acts, records that Paul's very first encounter with people in Philippi, it wasn't with a bunch of men. It was with a group of women. Acts 16 verse 13 says this. On the Sabbath, we went a little way outside the city to a riverbank where we thought people would be meeting for prayer. And we sat down to speak with some women who had gathered there. One of them was Lydia from Theatira, a merchant of expensive purple cloth who worshiped God. As she listened to us, the Lord opened her heart and she accepted what Paul was saying. She and her household were baptized and she asked us to be your guests. If you agree that I'm a true believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my home. And she urged us until we agreed. So Paul and his associates, they, they founded the church in Philippi when Lydia and her household were baptized. Lydia is the only uh, Philippian mentioned in the book of Acts. She opened her home to help start the church in Philippi. Absolutely incredible. Also, you have Priscilla. Another woman that was instrumental in the book of Acts and the birth of this new Jesus movement. And again, Luke makes sure to mention the name of yet another woman. Acts chapter 18, verse 1. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he became acquainted with a Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently arrived from Italy with his wife, Priscilla. You have Aquila and Priscilla. They are a couple. They had left Italy when Claudius Caesar deported all the Jews from Rome. Paul lived and worked with them for they were tent makers just as he was. So they took Paul into their home. They were tent makers like him. They were friends of his, close friends and supporters of Paul. They were founding members of this church. Paul's letters talk about their friendship from their very first meeting, even all the way to their, their last excruciating goodbye, right before Paul was executed. By all accounts, Priscilla, was kind of a, a mover and a shaker. She was very strong-minded. She was fervent in her love for God and for Jesus Christ. She was loyal to her husband. And Priscilla talked to whoever would listen about Jesus. Eventually, her and her husband started a church in their home. Romans 16, verse 3 says this. This is Paul. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers 
in ministry of, of Christ Jesus. In fact, they once risked their lives for me. I'm thankful for them. And so are all the Gentile churches. Also give my greetings to the church that meets in their home. So this church was started in the home of Priscilla and Aquila. Lydia and Priscilla, instrumental in this new Jesus movement, one that continues to this day. Now, I want to introduce you to Allison. Stuart and Allison and their family, they've been with the City Church from the very beginning. And, and not long ago, God gave Allison a dream to, to start a ministry, something she never thought she would find herself doing. We asked her to share her story with you guys. And so check it out. I've struggled with anxiety for many years and it's progressively gotten worse. And um, especially over the past couple of years, the anxiety got worse, but also then I started experiencing depression. I had had postpartum depression and um, just kind of thought, well, it'll go away. And then it dawned on me, my son was four years old and it, it was lingering. And so I knew that there was something underlying going on. Um, and so I started to seek professional counseling, um, really start trying to address those issues. And last summer, uh, summer of 2019, was probably the hardest and darkest time for me um, in really accepting and um, realizing that that's what I was struggling with and turning to the Lord and um, seeking His guidance. And as I was kind of going through that time, um, there was lots of anger, there was lots of frustration. Why is this going on? I am so blessed. Why am I dealing with all of these things? And um, through my prayers, I just said, God, if I'm gonna go through this, you better use it. Um, I don't want this just to be for me. I, I don't, I want to be able to share with others that you're faithful and you do provide and you will get us through this. And I tried so hard to find other women who had been through what I was going through just to be able to tell me you're not alone. And it was really hard. And it was hard because I didn't want to open up and say this is what I was struggling with at that time either. And so um, it was towards the end of the summer. And um, I remember very vividly, um, it was September 1st. And Sunday morning, I could not get myself to church. Um, and so I was sitting on the couch, wrapped up in my weighted blanket and with my husband and my kids. and. Um, Clayton began talking about anxiety and depression and um, how God can use anxiety and depression. And I looked at my husband and I was like, oh my goodness, God's speaking to me. Clayton is speaking to me directly um, through the screen. And um, by the end of his sermon, I knew that God was about to do something big. I didn't know what that would be. I didn't, I didn't know, but I, I was expecting him to do something. And um, that week, I was listening to a podcast. I had filled my time with, you know, listening to worship music, listening to a Christian podcast, and um, just really seeking the Lord and begging Him to, you know, fill my mind and fill my heart with things of Him. And so I was listening, and Kat Armstrong was talking about a book that she had just written, No More Holding Back. and she has a ministry called Polished and she's talking about this ministry and um, it immediately caught my attention and I was like, I have to know more about this. So I began to look it up and Polished is a network that gathers professional women to navigate career and explore faith together. And I have always been a working mom um, and finding other women who work and our moms and wives and kind of do all those things. It, it looks very different and it, it's hard to find a community. And so when I heard Kat talk about this, I thought I've got to figure out more information about this. And I immediately began looking and seeing where their chapters were. They did not have one in Lubbock. They have some across uh, the Dallas area, Oklahoma, Austin, Houston, and um, so there was a little button that said, reach out to us to bring Polish to your city. I thought, why not? You know, I'll see what this is about. And, um, and so that was three days after Clayton's sermon. And then following week, I had a call with Kat and her team. And um, I told Kat, I said, 
this is the worst timing ever. Like, I, I am not cut out for this. I cannot do this. I've been struggling with anxiety and depression, and this summer has been hard. Um, I, I can't add anything else to my plate. And she said, that's okay. God can. And um, I just began praying, and Kat and her team began praying and really just pouring into me. And I just, I said, okay, Lord, if this is what you want, one, I need a lot of help and people to make this happen. Um, and two, I need you to open doors. And so um, I chose to go to Dallas and visit and be there for one of their polished events. And a typical polished event looks like um, a luncheon where you meet from 12 to one. It's professional women. And so they really try to respect time and they have a speaker who comes in who's a professional Christian woman who just shares um, on a certain topic and they talk about personal and professional development and Jesus. And then my favorite part of the luncheon is then you get to sit and after the speaker's done, you have a table leader and you talk to the women at your table just about what spoke to you. What did God show you? What has he laid on your heart? What can you apply to your work life, your home life, your sphere of influence, your faith? Um, and then every, at the end of every luncheon, the gospel is shared. And so whether someone comes for professional development or because she knows it's a Christian event, every person gets to leave hearing about the love of Jesus. And so as I was sitting in Dallas, watching um, and taking in all that was happening, it's like I could just see the faces of women in Lubbock. And I saw the need, um, partially selfishly, because I wanted this. I wanted Lubbock women, and I wanted to um, be able to have this community, but I also knew that there was a need. and Surely there were other women who felt like me. And so um, I immediately came home and just started talking to people about um, this dream that I had to bring polish to Lubbock. And um, God immediately started bringing people into my life who were gonna come alongside me and join and support and um, make it happen because I sure wasn't gonna do it on my own. Um, and so throughout the fall, we just prayed and planned and God did open every single door for it to happen. and. Um, in February, we launched our very first luncheon here in Lubbock, and we had one of the strongest launches that Polished has ever had. We had 35 women show up, and it was incredible. Um, it was so neat to look at that room and, and to see all the walls come down for the women who walked in and just saying, oh man, I've been needing this, I've been needing that, I've been struggling with this, I've been struggling with anxiety and depression, I've, I've been lonely, I've been seeking this community, and it was amazing. Um, and so we were able to meet in February and March um, before we kind of put everything on hold and Polish looks a little bit different right now, um, but we are already gearing up for what it's gonna look like in the fall. And man, I miss those luncheons. And um, I stay in contact with all those women. I have already made lasting, lasting friendships and relationships with women. There was one young woman um, who I was introduced to and we immediately began talking. She was a professional woman with kids and um, through my conversations with her, she told me she was seeking peace. She just, she just wanted this peace. And, and I knew like, Jesus is your peace. And so I just kept praying for her and with her and we continued to kind of talk and text and stay in contact with each other um, over the coming months. And she was able to attend the March luncheon. And she came and listened. And as she was leaving, she gave me this huge hug and she said, um, let's have lunch. I said, okay, let's do it. And um, that week we had lunch. And um, I knew um, at the, at Every luncheon we have response cards, just like kind of at church. Um, and so she had checked that she wanted to know more about Jesus. And um, 
Polish did an incredible job of training us on the Roman road. And we have these beautiful polished Bibles that have the Roman road tabbed and um, made it so easy. And so I showed up to lunch ready to share Jesus with her. And um, she was so open to it. And throughout the lunch and talking just about life and this peace that she was wanting, I was able to explain to her that Jesus is the true peace and He's the only one that can fill that void in your heart. And um, I was able to lead her to Christ. She accepted Him and we have this amazing relationship now. It's so cool to be able to um, now lead her along and help her through, you know, life's not perfect and just because you accept Christ, you're still gonna have struggles and trials and um, hard things are gonna happen. However, she now has that true internal peace that she was longing for through Jesus. Awesome, thank you, Allison. Man, it's so cool to see God use people in this way. She was, she was struggling, right? And he uses that struggle to launch her in a new direction, some, somewhere she never thought she would be. Thank you so much, Allison, for sharing your story with us. Now I want to introduce you to, to Beth. Now, if you're not familiar, Beth is my mother. And although she's been in church her whole life, in church ministry her whole life, now later in life, God sent her in a completely new direction, like somewhere she never thought she would be. And he's using her in incredible ways. And I asked her to share her story with you guys. So here it is. Ministry came very naturally to me because I was raised by a mom who was very involved in, in ministry. So I helped her as a child. She was, she was in children's ministry in all different ways. And by the time I was 12, I was doing music for her and playing keyboard and, and uh, leading kids in worship. Then by the time I was in high school, probably a senior in high school, I started uh, teaching kids class in Sunday school. So all of that just came real normally for me. I really thought that was the way I should be. Uh, no pressure from anyone, but it just felt natural. And so from that point, I went into um, high school ministry and well, junior high and high school and, and did that for some years. And then I moved, it was like a gradual progression up. I moved up to adults and that's where I really found my niche as you would, as you might say. It, it's where I fit exactly and I knew it. I was always involved in music and stuff like that, but more and more, as I aged, as, as life went by, I fit more and loved more the ministry to adults. And that became a real passion for me, especially to women, because I wanted them to know the things I had learned. And I learned them in hard ways, but the more I learned, the more it burned in me to pass that on to other people. So that became a real wonderful and satisfying thing for me through the years. I taught all different ages, but everyone was like me. They were all good little church girls. And that just felt real comfortable. I really liked it. And I did quite a few Bible studies as well as church ministry and even classes for younger women. So that got real. It became my favorite place, my favorite thing to do. And I would say I was extremely comfortable in it. So much so that probably some a little bit of arrogance came in there, maybe. Um, I felt capable. That's probably the word. I knew I could do that. 
so I did. But then a friend of mine called me one day, six and a half years ago. She said, Beth, I have committed us to do a church service for the women at the Lubbock County Detention Center, which is the county jail. And I need you to help me. And please, will you help me? I've, we'll just do it this one time and we'll see how it goes. And, and if you'll just help me, then we can try, give this a try and, and we'll see what God does. And in the back of my mind, I was thinking, nope, no way, uh, mm -mm, not gonna happen. And I heard my voice say, okay. Why my voice said, okay? All I can say, it was just the Holy Spirit giving me a shove from the back because I didn't see it coming. And she said, we'll just try it this one week and then we'll, we'll see what happens. And I started walking that walk into jail ministry with women. Absolutely terrified, scary, freaked out, I'll never forget every time I walk through the door and there's all these heavy doors that slam behind you and the loud sound. For weeks, I would jump out of my skin every time the door would slam behind me. And that feeling of, what am I doing here? I don't belong here, I don't know. It, it stayed with me. At the same time, I saw women who were nothing like me, no background like mine, nothing that would have made me think they would feel comfortable or associate themselves with me. Um, yet we stood there, my whole ministry team, our ministry team, Isaiah 58, in front of those ladies and saw women who were broken and hungry and so ready to hear about how loved they were how accepted they were. And every one of us, after that very first service, yes, we were freaked out. Yes, it was just a little scary and completely out of every one of our comfort zones. But we saw God move in a way we had never seen before. And it was amazing. And there was nothing that I wanted to do more than that thing that I thought was so crazy that I couldn't possibly want to do or, or be able to do. It was like a hook in my jaw and that was it. And six and a half years later, we are still doing this thing that God kind of shoved us into. And you know, sometimes I still really bomb. I've even had people walk out of my services before because I was offensive. Now, those kind of little things don't really increase your uh, confidence, but oh man, far outweighing that is God's miraculous presence. We have seen hundreds and hundreds of women who have reached out for Jesus and become passionate followers. We've baptized many hundreds of women. I have no idea. I would expect close to a thousand in that amount of time. And it's the best thing I've ever, ever done. So thank you, God, for pulling me, pushing me, however you want to say it, out of my comfort zone because it wasn't where I would really see the miraculous. And that would be what I would say to you. It's not because I'm a great person. I don't like a pedestal at all. I'm not comfortable there at all. And I don't belong on one. It is for anyone who will just be willing to say, yes, God make me uncomfortable. God used me in ways I didn't expect, and God will do it. That's my best advice. Just get ready, tighten the seatbelt, because God wants to take you places that you never expected to go. Wow. Preach it, Mama Beth. <laughs> she is truly 
amazing. And God has just radically changed her life and her ministry because of where she was willing to step into. She was willing to get out of her comfort zone and be obedient to what God was leading her to do. And it's changed everything for her. She's being used in ways she never thought possible. Huge kingdom impact. You know, at the city, it's been Clayton's dream that the city would be a dream incubator. Like you might have heard of this kind of thing, like in Silicon Valley, uh, tech companies and startups, they'll have these incubator homes, these, these people that will offer room and board to people that are working on apps or their software or whatever in hopes that they could be a part of their, their business one day if, if it takes off and it's, if it's successful. You know, much in the same way, we want to be dream incubators for you. If God lays a dream on your heart, like Allison or, or like Beth with Isaiah 58, if God lays a dream on your heart, we want to share in that dream with you. We want to support you, encourage you, help you fulfill what God is leading you to do. So my question for you is, what is your dream? Do you have a dream? Acts 2 says that in the last days, sons and daughters will prophesy and see visions and dream dreams. Has he given you a dream? Has he laid something on your heart? Maybe something different than you would ever thought you would be doing. Maybe something that pulls you out of your comfort zone and it scares you a little bit. Is it a God-sized dream? Maybe you need to ask God to give you a dream. In fact, that's our big idea today. We've talked first week, be available. You know, second week, tell your story. And today we're saying, ask for a dream. Ask God for a dream. Ask him. Ask him, God, give me a dream. I want, I want to be launched into ministry for you. God, give me something that gets me out of my comfort zone so that I depend on you. There's no telling what God could do in and through you with that kind of attitude, with that you know, kind of willingness to be used by him in whatever way he sees fit. We're about to sing again. I want to pray for us. And again, through this series, I hope you're encouraged. And I hope you know that God wants to use you. He wants to use your story. He wants to give you a dream. He wants to use you in ways you could never imagine. So as I pray, I want to encourage you just to keep your heart open to God and ask him to use you. And then have the courage to step through that door and to act on it. And we, your church family, we want to be here to help you to support you in any way we can as we reach this city for Jesus. Would you pray with me? God, thank you so much that you choose to use ordinary people like us, use our brokenness. Yeah, you've done it all through scripture, all through church history, and you're doing it today. And God, we want to be in on it. We don't want to sit on the sidelines. We don't want to be just church attenders. We don't want to be ones that just soak up the knowledge, right? We want to be doers of the word. We want to be out sharing Jesus with people. Use us, God. Give us the courage to make ourselves available to you, the courage to answer your call, the courage to share our story. God, give us a dream. Help us to get out of our comfort zone and to step out into uncharted waters where we have to have the faith to rely on you, trust in you that you've got us. And we know, God, there's no limit to what you can do with a people that are like that, just willing, empty vessels waiting to be used. We love you in your name. Amen.